Hiya folks, we're finally back on the trike for claim. This is part 24. I want to get the fuel tank out. It's been in there for decades and I don't know what state it is. So let's get the car jacked up. Let's get the back wheels off and let's get some uh, light under there and get this tank unbolted so we can have a look and flush it out. See you in a minute. Right, well, as you probably know, we haven't been on the trike for claim for ages and ages. This is the first real good day of weather we've had during our so-called lockdown for the uh, you-know-what virus. So I'm going to take this opportunity to get the car up in the air and uh, have a look at the underside of it. Uh, I know it's covered in a lot of oil under there. The previous owner used to regularly spray oil under there to keep rust at bay. So basically, there shouldn't be any rot underneath there. But we'll have a look once we get up in the air. Let me take the wheels off. I'll put you on a bit of time lapse for that. Get the car jacked up and let's uh, get this fuel tank out. Right, okay, that's it. I've got it right up in the air now, and I've got it supported on axle stands, as well as the two jacks still under there. So, as you can see, that's safe. Now, this is held in, apparently, this tank, by four bolts, two at the front, two at the back. Uh, I had a little message from Dave uh, Parkness, who uh, has got a YouTube channel, and he said you can get away with undoing the front two bolts, taking them right out, and loosening the back two, and he thinks that the tank slides out, and disconnecting the, the actual fuel tube from the... Um, the fuel cap area. So I'm gonna have a look underneath first of all. It's a bit oily under there. As I said to you, the previous owner had covered it with oil, the underneath, and uh, that seems to be the case. So I'm gonna get a pair of gloves on, get these wheels off just to give us a bit more light, and uh, we'll get underneath and have a look and see what we got. Right, okay then, so I'm gonna get the, uh, the wheels off now. Just put that underneath. Now what size are these gonna be? Probably eight, 19 mil or 17, one of the two. Uh, let's go for 17. No. In fact, are they loose? 19. There we go, 19 mil. They shouldn't be that tight, to be honest with you, because um, Jimmy only put them on loosely, I think. One. Two. Three. Only four wheels little wheel nuts on these. Get that little wheel off, <laughs> tiny little wheels. I'll stick that under the um, front of the car. I just realised I might have to move that jack out of the way actually because um, I'm going to need to slide under there obviously so now I've got that up let's go around the other side and take the other one off as well. All right I'm a little bit more restricted for room around this side but uh, let's have a go anyway. Coming off okay so far. There we go, there we go. All right, okay, that's M4 off. Put that there. Definitely speeds things up having one of those um, impact uh, drivers. That's another wheel I've got every refurbished. But the tyre on that one actually looks okay, so let's put that underneath there anyway. I'll tell you what, I'll stick them um, nuts back on the uh, hub. And I'll just show you what I had to do here before to get, when I got it running initially, I had to put a temporary filter on there. Let me show you. Oh, as you can see, um, that's where the original fuel filter lives in there. And that was sort of corroded in there. That sits on the side of the tank by the looks of it. And I found the correct tank filter but I had to just let it hang there until such a time when I come to take this tank off. So that's that there. You've got a flexible coupling that links on via Jubilee clip there and also a clip there as well by the looks of it. And I might just undo that clip there because that pipe here looks, uh, well, I don't really want to disturb that if I can help it. So I'll undo that clip there, I think. That one just there. 
and that should just slide that little flexible coupler off with the tank. So coming under the back of the Triumph for claim, as you can probably see, this is covered in oil where he's uh, sprayed some sort of oil all over it. And that's the handbrake mechanism there, as you can probably see there. That's coated in oil and grease, so it's well protected, believe it or not. Although I may not look the greatest, but uh, yeah, so we've got two bolts here. That's the fuel tank there, obviously. Um, you can't probably see it. We've got one bolt there. Uh, one bolt here just behind this axle stand there as you can see just there and there's two more on the front as well and as you can probably see up there that's that clip that jubilee clip type thing there which we're going to need to undo as well so i'm going to get a pair of grips squirt that with wd-40 first of all see if we can loosen that off and uh, undo that clip before i actually undo these four bolts or they definitely undo these two ones and take the front two out so just i'm just going to do that clip now Right, well that's not too bad, that come off pretty easy. I've got these other bolts now to contend with. So as you can see, that's one of them there. I think they're, uh, are they 13 mil? I'm not sure. Let me get a 13 mil. Let's get that on there. Is it 13? No, it's a 12, isn't it? Bloody would be, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's a 12, is it 12? Yes. Right, okay, let's get it on there. Now hopefully these won't be seized up, which they're not. So let me just loosen that off. I'm not going to take these right out at the moment. I don't think there's any fuel in the tank, as I say, but um, Dave reckons you can just loosen these off. And I think you might be right. Is it coming down? Yeah, it is coming down. And there looks to be a gap, maybe? I don't know. No, I'm not sure. I think they've got to come right out, believe it or not. Right, let me undo this right away first. Well, I think these nuts have to come right out. I'll just do this one first, because, as I say, it's, uh, it's loose now, so it's no hassle for me to just have a look to see if there's a bridging bit at the back of the bolt. All right, so there you go. But as you can see there, there is no slot in that, so they did have to come right out. So right, that's fine. I'll take the other one out. But before I do that, do take the other one out. I'm just gonna put something under the center of the uh, fuel tank as a way of support. So I'm gonna get a little axle stand and put it under the middle there before I take that out. So bear with me. All right, let's get underneath again. Because if I take that second bolt out now, I've got a feeling that um, that's just going to sort of drop down that tank. So if I put that there, right, so I'll just leave that maybe there. It's nearly there, but uh, right, I'm going to do that second bolt now, which hopefully you can see just here. And I'm thinking that this tank should start to drop down now. Uh, it probably stuck in place, mind you. And as I say, there is no fuel in it, but... It looks like it is starting to drop down to me. I thought this was going to be a lot more trickier than this actually, so uh, so far I'm uh, pretty happy with the way it's turning out. There we go. Right, and that was handy putting that there because there's obviously going to be a fuel sender and a cable on top of that, so let me go around the front now while I undo the front two bolts. Uh, right, okay. These ones are here, this one's by the exhaust there. I don't know whether I can get in there or not, but uh, we'll have a go. Again, they're covered well in oil, so. Oh, Mr. Preservation, who had it before. And they're nice and loose. Well, not loose, I mean, they're not seized up. Now, I don't know whether Dave was talking about these ones being slotted. Maybe these were the ones he was talking about. No, they don't feel slotted either, so. Maybe on your one they were slotted, Dave, because someone might have had them out before. Well, hold on. These ones are slotted. These ones, you slide the tank this way and then backwards. So that's what it is, that's what he was talking about. So let me go around the other side, I'll just undo the other one, then we'll slot that tank out and uh, drop it down. As I say, I know there's gonna be a sender cable on the top there. I don't know where I'll probably gain access to that, whether it's under the seat or whether the cable will stretch and pull, so we'll have to take that, play that one by here. Hopefully you can see that where it's slotted. So as I say, the tank comes this way and then back. So I'm going to do the other side. Right, just dug the old manual out because I don't want to, if I drop the tank down, pull the uh, connections for the fuel tank sender. So let's just have a look at the fuel tank sender. 
Right, so there's a drain hole in the middle of the tank. There's our four mounting bolts, which we've already had done. We've undone that one. And it says fuel tank breather hoses are connected next to it. I haven't seen them, so we'll have to have a look for them. The fuel line passing through the near side wheel arch. Well, we know where that is because we've seen the filter there. Slack and all boats holding the fuel tank running along the outer edge. There's only them four. Support the tank from below, which we've already done, and remove the bolts. Release the pressure valve from its clip and remove the tank. Well, the pressure valve is this thing up there. So whatever this is, this comes down with it. I haven't seen that. So uh, a fill-in vent pipe is also connected between the tank and the fill and neck. So that pressure valve, I haven't actually seen that. So if we come around this side, I can't actually see it there. There's the fuel filter, as I said to you, which is on the side of the tank. Those are these hoses here, which I can see now. Let's get a torch. Right, so the tank, as we know, is down there. And we have got these fuel lines coming up here, which we might be able to see better from underneath. So these two fuel lines here have got to be disconnected from the tank as well. So let's go underneath and uh, have a look. Right, you'll have to give me a second, folks. I'm going to have to mess about with these. It's going to take a bit of time. I'll see you in a minute. Right, there you go. I've labelled them all up. I know exactly where they come from. One to four, labelled from front of the car to the back of the car. And the hoses are in excellent condition because they were all covered in that oil, as I said to you. I've also disconnected the vent pipe going to the fuel tank as well up to there and there was a little pipe going into the bodywork as well which was a level vent pipe as well. I think that's it, I think we're ready to drop the tank so let's have a go. Now don't forget I'm on my own doing this. Um, the paint tank was come towards me and then backwards hopefully so if I move it towards me sideways. I don't know about the sender unit yet, so these bolts have got to be undone a little bit more. Yeah, you've got to undo it so that the flange is clear. You haven't got to take them right out, that's what Dave said, but you do have to undo them enough so that the flange is clear, the lip on the tags. Doing it the way I'm doing it is never the right way if you're restoring a car, laying on the floor. You never got the clearance and you never get full visibility of what you're doing so right so I've got that bolt out now so technically speaking it's literally just resting on that what I could have done really was put the um, trolley jack under the middle there because I've made it sort of difficult for myself now so this is now ready to lower it down <coughs> lucky enough I've got more than one trolley jack so Right, that's that. Just take that trolley axle stand out of there. And now hopefully, lower it down. And I can't see the sender cable yet. There we go, ah, there we go. Ah, oh, that's better. Now it all looks clear. I can see the sender cable now the other side. Of course, things are stale few fuel. So if I pull that back, should be able to just pull them connectors off. There's only one connector there. And that's it, basically. I can now hopefully take the tank out. I'll just push it out that way, and then uh, we can have a look at it. All right, okay. Let's get that out of the way. Get that out of the way. Oh, there's my two bolts, I don't want to lose them. Let's pull this tank out. Oh, it has got fuel in it. I didn't realise. Oh, God. Where it's covered in so much gunk, it don't want to drag. <laughs> that might be a good thing. And just as I thought, there has been a mouse living under here. I had many suspicions about that. There we go. So there's them pipes I was telling you about. Lucky enough, I've numbered them all up, uh, one to four. So I know where they go. That was a little uh, vent pipe there. That went into the boot area. That was probably that valve they was talking about. That was the uh, vent, obviously, that went up to the uh, fuel tank as well, send the unit. 
And as I said to you, there's the remnants probably of a mouse living here. That's the fuel sander at the front. And it has actually got quite a bit of fuel left in it. So I don't know yet exactly what it's going to look like. I'm going to have a clear up now. I don't really want to do any more on this today. Uh, the time now is quarter to five. And uh, I've got to have my tea, have a clear up. So yeah, there we go. That was a bit of a job and a half. I got covered with the grease underneath there, as you can probably see. It's all down the side of the car as well. But uh, we got it out anyway. That's the main thing. We got it out. We did it on our own uh, in very limited conditions. Anyway, just something else I want to show you. We're going to go out to the log cabin. I've got a couple more stickers to put on the wall out there. So let's go have a little look out there quickly. That's a bit better. In actual fact, I've got a feeling this is going to probably be okay. I won't know for sure, but uh, the underside is definitely well protected, which is normally the bit that gets corroded because of the uh, dirt from the road and the water and all that. So let me show you what i got. So as I say, that looks like some sort of vent valve or whatever, the pressure valve or something. You've got four hoses here. Look, and all these hoses, believe it or not, are in very good condition. So there's one, uh, two, three, Two hoses come from the pressure valve there, as you can see. And the other three come to the tank. You've also got that breather hose underneath by the looks of it. Uh, that went into the boot area. I didn't know what it was. I just pulled it and it came out. So I don't quite know exactly where that went. You've got the filler neck, as you can see, which again looks in all very good condition. And also that breather hose there as well. So the fuel sender, as you can see, is down the front. Uh, there was enough cable on that. That's just a half a kick, which I will undo. Not now, because I'm going to leave this outside now. Half a kick, that should pull out, and we should be able to have a good look inside the tank. That'll be in the next video anyway. There's a bit of surface rust on the top there, but, I mean, that's to be expected. This can all be rubbed down, treated with the vac tan rust treatment, and uh, obviously repainted again, probably with uh, smooth right, uh, hammer right paint, smooth right paint. So that's that. All right, well, there you go. That's... Trotter video, not Trotter video, what am I talking about? That's Triumph video number 24. Good to be back on it again. Good to get some work done on it. And looking at the underside of it, when I took that tank out, the floor pans and stuff like that are totally immaculate. There is a bit of rust uh, on the back inside. I'll show you that. I don't think it's MOT stuff or whatever, but uh, I'm probably not going to bother with that. I'll leave that for the next owner because people do tinker about with old cars and uh, there is a bit of patchwork to be done underneath, but I'll show you that in the next video anyway. So first of all, I'd like to... Uh, Thank Ashley from AJP Garden Machines. He sent me one of his stickers there, as you can probably see. And we'll put that up on our wall of fame. So let's put him next to Park Nest, like that. He can go under the diesel guy, there we go. AJP Garden Machines, that's Ashley. And then I've got this one. <laughs> Look at that little baby, Naked Campers, sponsored by solinks.co.uk. Uh, this is from Graham, he says, thanks Martin. Hope you all, hope, uh, you and all your family keep safe. Best regards, Graham. Dave Dons. Uh, Graham, I think, told me that he does lawnmower, not lawnmower repairs, sewing machine repairs, but I don't know where the naked campers bit comes in, so we'll stick him uh, again down there as well. Actually, you can keep an eye on him. So there we go, there's AJP Gardens and Machines uh, and naked campers there. Happy days. One day you might see your sticker on my wall of fame. So I'd also like to say hello from uh, Connor from CNC Gardens CMC uh, Gardening Services. And you probably remember my trotter mower, which I did, uh, oh, last year sometime, might have been last year sometime, I think, yeah. And he's actually done his own one, and he sent me a few pictures of it. So here's a few pictures of uh, Connor. Here's Connor, first of all. And uh, obviously, these, this, this is his uh, mower through different stages of uh, completion. And he's actually done a nice job of it. So there you go, another little unique mower out there. And uh, well done, Connor, for that, and also sending me the pitch. Thanks very much indeed. Glad to see it. Uh, uh, glad to see you've done something useful with your spare time as well. And again, treat it as a hobby. Anyway, thanks very much, folks. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. And don't forget, if you do like my channel, hit that subscribe button. Do check out my other videos as well. I've got loads of playlists on plenty of different stuff. You can look at my Butler's Empire channel. You can also look at my Retro Hacks channel as well. And if you like them, hit the subscribe button and ring that little notification bell. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. And until then. Bye for now.